You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy Summit on 5G, and I'm joined now by Jorgen Andersen, who is chairman of the OECD Digital Economic Policy Committee. Jorgen, thanks for speaking to us on Telecom TV. We've heard a lot of talk about the technology behind 5G, but what about the social and economic benefits that it could bring? I think that when looking at the digital economy, you should be, bear in mind that it is very important that you look into the entire ecosystem of the digital economy. You have to look at the e-infrastructure, the e-literacy skills part of it, e-security, e-privacy, and the fourth one, e-applications, e-content. Only if all these four elements are working successfully, you will have a flourishing digital economy. Only then you will see the benefits for innovation, growth, and, and jobs. So this is important. When we talk about 5G in that context, 5G is a very, very important element in the e-infrastructure part of the ecosystem. And I think that it is important when dealing with 5G in Etsy and all other fora, you should always bear in mind that you are an integral part of the entire digital economy. So 5G is only part of the broader digital economy requirements? Yeah. You could say that 5G um, provides a sort of a, a pipe, an infrastructure pipe. But no matter what high quality pipe you make available to, to users, it doesn't make any sense if this pipe is empty. If people do not have the skills, the literacy which makes them able to use that pipe, it doesn't make any sense if they are not trusting using the pipe, if they're not trusting using the 5G technology, if they are worried about privacy, if they're worried about security and so on, and on top of this, it doesn't really make sense to have 5G technology if there are no important applications and so on using that technology. So it all uh, should be seen in a, a complete context. Uh, nothing stands alone. In your presentation today, you told delegates here at the Etsy Summit that broadband to everybody and full mobile coverage is what counts for politicians. Are they sincere behind this? Does telecoms and 5G really have the political support? Politicians are concerned about what is on the top of the minds of ordinary people in their constituencies. What worries people is do we have the availability of broadband connection? Can we use our mobile phones where we live, where we go around in forests, on beaches, and in mountain climbing, and so on? They don't care about the digital economy. So the task for politicians is to move one step further up and make the helicopter perspective, and also to explain to ordinary constituents what is so important about the digital economy. And I think that increasingly heads of state around the world have realized that this is a topic to be focused on. What does a digital strategy require and what are the challenges it needs to address? There are a number of, of potential potholes, if you could describe it like that. I think one is that um, I already talked about um, trust issue, that you, you're you not able to solve the security and privacy issues around 5G. Uh, another issue is the literacy skills issue. You don't have the data specialists who, to develop uh, services, applications used to be used by 5G and so on. And one further uh, potential pothole is that you are not aware of the importance that this is not a question to be dealt with by one single minister in government, an ICT minister. Actually, almost all ministers of government are involved in the digital economy, are involved in the environment in which 5G uh, will emerge. And that means, and that is my personal observation, my personal opinion, I think this is an issue to be dealt with by a group of ministers with the prime minister sitting at the end of the table doing this coordination work 
which is so important to make this uh, evolve success successfully. Jürgen, thank you very much indeed. Oh, yeah.